knowing what you stand for as well, because I remember when, when I was creating work with my street art, I had quite a distinctive style, but my, my other work was quite all over the place. And, you know, maybe I didn't really know what I was trying to say. Whereas if you see people that have got a really coherent style and they're a real coherent message, it makes it a lot easier for people to buy into that. So, you know, it's about getting to know yourself really, really well and being really honest with yourself about what you're about. And that really helps people make a connection with you. My name is Sonia Small here. I'm an artist, art coach and course creator. When I graduated from the Art Academy, I had learned how to paint and how to draw, but I had no idea how to earn a living with my creativity. I was not prepared for the life as a working artist. This often left me quite frustrated, sometimes on the verge of calling it quits, throwing away my brushes and giving it all up. But I'm so glad I didn't. After many failed attempts and valuable lessons learned, I've discovered ways to turn my creativity into a profession, now giving me the freedom to live the life I love. I created the Help I'm Artist podcast because no matter where you are on your journey, whether you're just starting out or maybe you've been a working artist for a while, you too can take steps to turn your creative passions into a meaningful, sustainable profession. The Help I'm Artist podcast is filled with fresh inspiration, practical tips and interviews with artists who are experts in their field. If you're a smart artist or one in the making who's looking for new and exciting ways to get your art out of your studio and into the hands and hearts of an audience that's appreciative and willing to pay what it's worth, then you're in the right place. Happy listening. In today's episode, I'm chatting to UK artist Mish Maudsley, aka Mishfit. Mishfit occupies that exciting space between street art and fine art painting, creating striking and color drenched artworks from her studio in Brighton. Let's take a listen to what inspires her and what steps she's taking to build her art practice. Here is part two of our conversation. What do you like the most about being an artist? Oh, that's a massive question. Um, yeah, on a personal level, it's just ultimate self-expression, really. You know, it's especially given that my my other job requires me to respond to other people's briefs all the time. You know, I'm doing work for other people. When I paint, it is purely for me. You know, it is entirely self-initiated. It's my own little universe that I'm building. And, and I love that. I absolutely love that. It's just fun. It's just really, really fun. I, I, yeah, I think I'm a bit of a pleasure seeker in life. And it's like, why, would, why wouldn't you love doing this? It's, it's brilliant. You know, it, it can take you wherever you want to go in terms of around the world. You can meet loads of insane, crazy people. It's, it's brilliant. Being an artist is amazing. Really interesting, really mentally stimulating. It's really good for your brain as well, you know, in terms of a mental well-being perspective. So sorry, that's, that's loads of answers to one question. Um, and then the other side of the coin, what do you least like about being an artist? Yeah, it's just this tension with money is, I mean, obviously when you sell a painting, oh, it's brilliant. It's it's the best. It's the best thing. Um, yeah, the, the tension around money is probably the, the most stressful side of it. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. It's just it's the more problematic, tricky. I think every, every artist wishes they could just paint and they just had a wealthy benefactor that, you know, just ordered 20 paintings and, and people, you know, that does happen. Um, so, yeah, that the financial pressure around it is probably the least, my least favourite aspect of it. But mm. it is an absolute necessary aspect and you, you can't be a fantasist about it. You have to embrace it and treat it as part of the whole. So, mm. yeah. And what would your advice be for creators or maybe emerging artists that are starting out what would be your advice or maybe if you look back over your own you know how you started out that you wish you'd known uh, to get the ball going to get that momentum going yeah I mean advice for me specifically would be to sort of be patient I suppose and just realize that it's a step-by-step -step process and don't just think that you failed because one thing hasn't worked out you know um 
also get help, get a mentor. People don't really talk about it much in the art world, even though you know, historically a lot of the artists, they actually mentored each other, you know, in corporate and um, creative industries, people have, sorry, I mean, design industry, people have mentors all the time. But in the art world, we don't, people don't really like talking about it, like it's some admission of weakness or something. But if I'd had a mentor, especially a female mentor, when I was in my 20s, when I was doing a lot of street art, that would have really, really helped. And I probably would have, would have excelled a lot more than I did if I'd had that support. So, you know, realising your skill gap, realising your weaknesses and addressing that by getting help. And it doesn't have to be paid help. You can just be curious and ask questions Whereas I was just worried about looking like I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't, I never asked any questions, mm. but people like being asked questions. It makes them feel important. So just be ever curious and really, you know, yeah, just, just try and find out as much as you can. Mm. Um, yeah. Just be bold. Just be really, really bold and don't hide in a corner. <laughs> Uh, but it, you know, if, if you are super confident and there's loads of other things you can do, and that's probably not what you're, what your struggle is with. Um, there's so much information out there now about how to do things. Mm -hmm. Just look up, how, how, do I, how do I be X, Y, Z? You know, what's the roadmap? Just get advice, educate yourself because we, we are in a privileged position now that we, we have access to so much information. Mm -hmm. um, and realize opportunities when they're in front of you and take them there are so many opportunities I just missed or I let, I let pass me by because I wasn't really I didn't even realize that it was an opportunity you know I was just sort of there having a lovely time when I should have been sort of pushing a bit more I guess now so don't afraid to be pushy and take up space in, in a like in a nice authentic way obviously don't don't be a don't be an arsehole about it, but just be ambitious. I think it, it gets you there quicker. <laughs> great, great insights and tips right off your own experience. This is not from a book. You've been there, done that. And uh, yeah, in retrospect, as you're saying, there's just so much out there and possible. Yeah. And, and sorry, one, one more thing is actually just knowing what you stand for as well, because I remember when, when I was creating work with my street art I had quite a distinctive style but my, my other work was quite all over the place and you know maybe I didn't really know what I was trying to say whereas if you see people that have got a really coherent style and they're a real coherent message it makes it a lot easier for people to buy into that so you know it's about getting to know yourself really really well and being really honest with yourself about what you're about and that really helps people make a connection with you I think. Mm. Yes, yeah, what I really enjoy about your work, Mish, is that it's so consistent. Is that a struggle now, for you? Now it is. <laughs> now it is. I was all over the shop for ages and I still have to rein it in. You know, I, I will always accept I am a multidisciplinary artist and I will always draw inspiration from lots of different places and be pulled in lots of different directions. But it's about discipline and sticking with what you're doing right now. All those other great ideas, they go down in a notebook. So when I'm ready for a new collection, I look at that and, you know, I work out what I want to do next. But it's taken a long time. I'm 43 and I've only just sort of realised that in the last sort of three, four years. So, hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's something you really have to work at very intentionally, consciously. Yeah. Not yeah. this, not that, so curating all the time. Absolutely. And, uh, I think this it's called shiny object syndrome, isn't it? Where you're working on something, you're like, oh, but that's better, that's more exciting. And you're you can feel yourself being pulled magnetically to this other thing. It's some sort of procrastination curse, I think. But um mm. it's a constant battle, you know, with your brain, essentially. It's, it takes discipline. <laughs> yeah. And then it helps if you've got that like working on a collection, working on exactly. a, an event or going to yep. a fair that you have something that you yeah. are working so you're not all over the place yeah yes yeah. and then just zooming out a little bit uh Amish, the importance of art i mean mm. can we imagine a world without creativity and art no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be like hell uh but why would why should people hang art on their wall in your perspective well in terms of having it in your home i think buying art is an ultimate act of self-expression as well you are saying i love this enough to have paid money for it and hanging it on my wall you know so it, it's a real statement of intent about what you're about and what you like and what you stand for uh and you can see you know see people buying art they're just they're like oh they're just so i don't know 
yeah, it's, it's quite a special exchange, I think. Obviously, people buy art for many different reasons. They buy for investment, you know, which I think is quite sad. I think you should always buy art you love. Art itself is hugely culturally important. Like, art is culture. It creates culture. It informs culture. It is culture. You know, we are creative beings. You look at the cave paintings from 5,000 years ago, or however, however old they are, they they are still around now and people are still talking about them. That's how important and how sort of significant art is. It's in our very fabric. It's part of how we evolved, you know, in innovative thinking, creative thinking, problem solving. It's absolutely vital to human existence, I think. And art plays a massive role in that as, you know, reinforcing ideals, challenging ideals, you look at before photography, art was so supremely powerful. You know, it was a tool used by the church. It was a tool used by the state. It was a tool used by dissidents to question all of that. It's played a massive role in our history and it's absolutely vital to, to being human, I think. So yeah, yeah. art is very important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if there, I know you've shared with me, shared this with me before, is a moment when someone interacted with one of your art pieces. Mm. It really resonated or, you know, that those are those beautiful stories that you hear when, you know, someone actually purchases a piece and it's so personal, it reflects some, a moment in their life, uh, tells their story. Can you think of something here at yeah putting... I mean I've, I've had loads of little sort of sound bites so you know like oh my god it reminds me of me and my partner or you know just, this just reminds me of this particular moment in time but one that just really made my hair stand on end was um a painting of mine called The Void which is uncharacteristically quite dark and moody for me this this woman is a friend of mine she'd recently lost a really really close friend of hers she died and she, the minute she saw the painting she was like oh my god that's how I feel. And she's like, I haven't been able to express in words how I felt over the last month and that is it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, is this really problematic for you? She's like, no, it's a real relief to see my emotions like in front of me. It is really helpful. And I was just like, that just floored me. I was not expecting that kind of reaction from a painting of a cloud, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is massive. This is mm. literally, this is emotional representation right here. And um, yeah, that's what spurred me into this, this whole new Lost Embrace collection. And um, I think that will stick with me for life. You know, that's such a ma massive moment. Powerful that art can connect other people with their feelings that they, you know, like you said, you, as an introvert, finding words at being able to put that in a painting, it's mm. also for your audience. Yeah, this is what yeah, I mean. They're, they're often a mirror to someone's own experiences. And I heard a couple, a husband and wife, discussing another painting of mine called Spring Horizon, which is a big sort of cumulonimbus cloud over the ocean. And she was like, oh God, it's so tranquil. I love it. And he's like, really? It looks like an atomic bomb's just gone off. And <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like laughing behind them. It's like, how fascinating. Yeah. Two different, completely opposed reactions to this one painting. It's just it's brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely yeah. fascinating. And I also really like the idea of like a, sh a shared experience of, of being human as well. You know, like mm. everyone exper experienced loss and yearning during the pandemic. Again, this is what the Lost Embrace collection is about. And then the excitement of being reunited with, you know, friends and loved ones and that shared commonality. You know, there's so much in the world now that is about opposing people and creating conflict and creating sort of hostility towards different groups. So I really like trying to celebrate the things that we all share. Like we're all mm. human. We all experience similar emotions. And, and if my paintings can bring people together over that, then, then, you know, that's a massive win. Do you have like a life verse that you live by, something that's really foundational that you uh, can share? Yeah, I think I mentioned it earlier. It's uh, progress over perfection. And that's, I just keep coming back to that. I know it's not very uh, profound, but it's incredibly useful on a daily basis when I'm having little freak outs of like, oh God, oh God. It's like, nope, come on, do this because this is progress, you know. And thankfully, I'm not like a crippling perfectionist, but I think every artist can procrastinate and noodle over a painting for probably like four more days than they actually need to. It's, it's in our nature, I think. So that 
mantra is incredibly helpful to me to just get stuff done, you know, and not linger on things too much. Just get it done, get it out and then learn, learn from that experience and then be better next time. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think you never, ever, you will never achieve perfection. And I think you'll only be successful if you're constantly open, constantly curious and a lifelong student I think people that think they're excellent are not trying hard enough and they're, you know, they've got the wrong attitude. I think you you will all, you will never reach perfection. So just do what you can, get it done, and then do the next thing. So then the artists, present day, past day artists that inspire you? Oh my God. Uh, so many that I can't possibly list them all, but there's, you know, there's sort of, um, genres of artwork certainly that you know have have left a massive impact on me so like you know the old masters for example like Turner who is just a master class in how to paint light and colour and then like Caravaggio and Velasquez and Antion Wentz and um, John Martin these these paintings are just so over the top full of drama full of doom and portent you know and they're just incredible incredible masterclasses in composition and how to create a a very compelling painting so you know i i'm an atheist i don't believe in god but i'm always obsessed with massive religious paintings i just find it so they're just so brilliant you know and and they were like a propaganda machine for the church at the time and they're just incredible or inspiring bits of work so you can see the influence in my in my painting you know the, the, the composition and the clouds you can almost imagine cherubs flying around yeah some of the them. transfiguration <laughs> um, yeah so I, I, I always you know always go back to the old master paintings and there's always something you can learn from them um and also like our old um you know some japanese um masters like hukasai um more sort of 19th century egon shield i think his work is just incredible his use of line very very graphic and then more contemporary artists like Jenny Seville uh, the modern master her paintings are just again just a masterclass in how to paint flesh I saw her show at the sensations exhibition in well, I don't know 20 years ago and it just blew my mind and it's people still talk about that ex- at that exhibition today that was seminal absolutely seminal um, and then from the street art world uh, there's I'm always just super impressed by female street artists that are out there painting massive, massive walls. It's an American artist called Human, uh, H-U-E-M-A-N. Um, Heraku, she's a, she was part of a duo, is part of a duo, German um, woman. Uh, Soy Milk, she's an amazing American artist who just paints these very sort of ethereal but quite sexual sort of figurative works that are just magical like fairy tales they're stunning and then a Dutch um, graffiti trio called Tilmo Miel they're amazing such lovely lovely very quiet boys but their work is just outstanding and there are hundreds and hundreds of exceptional street artists out there painting huge huge murals in all weathers all over the world you know and is if you're looking for a fresh hit of inspiration just just explore that genre of art because it is mind-blowing what these people Mm -hmm. are creating at such massive scale is is just you know incredible and that's something Mm -hmm. I'm aiming I'm aiming towards for sure. So I have a very broad spectrum of influence from old masters through to contemporary day street artists, basically. Mm. And I I dip in between all of them to kind of, like I said, find intersection where things overlap and how I can create tension in my work. Mish, where can people find you? How can they best follow you or connect with you? Um, So my website is mishfit.com and you can sign up for my mailing list there and that will give you lots of insight into my studio practice, um, discounts for art fair tickets, private view invites, that kind of thing. And I'm also pretty active on Instagram. Uh, I am mishfit underscore art. I'm also playing with the horror show that is TikTok, also mishfit (laughs) underscore art horrible but fascinating it's like watching a car crash um so if you know if you're up for a laugh on tiktok pop over there as well uh, but primarily um yeah my website and my instagram great well definitely put uh, your details in the notes of the podcast so people can head there and go and have a look at your art too on your website i want to thank you for your time and all these valuable insights uh, it's really been uh, just a joy to listen to your story and just to see your boldness that it's not just come you know come naturally if I can put it that way you've really had to take steps and you are seeing you know uh, fruit of your work thank you very much for uh, sharing your story 
Oh, well, thanks so much for having me. It's been great. And it's, it's, it's lovely to just chat about it with you always. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, that's all for this week. If you want extra support in marketing and building a business around your creativity, then you're welcome to join me and a group of wonderful artists from around the world in the Help I'm Artist Facebook group. Don't forget to download your free art marketing guide. You can head over to www.sonyasmallhere.com. And if you don't ever want to miss an episode, then you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to this episode and leave a review as this will make the podcast more visible and easier for other artists to find it. Thanks for that. Have an amazing week and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Until then.